Hello, hello. Well, I guess I will go ahead and get started. Um, and for starters, I apologize for missing yesterday. Um, I was dealing with a bit of a migraine, so I was doing my best to get everything ready for today. Um, but jumping into this, um, I'm going to show how to prep a canvas with kind of a base coat before we um, jump into the actual image that's going to go onto the canvas. With the otter, um, I like to put a white base coat on the entire canvas first and then let it dry a bit and come back to it. Um, but at the same time, I was going to go ahead and show if anybody's going to be doing the bat painting tomorrow. Let me show that real fast. Anybody's going to be doing this guy tomorrow. I also want to prep this canvas um, before doing it. Sorry about that little blip there. Let me see if I can get that out. Um, but it's going to be a black coat of paint over top of the entire canvas beforehand. So if anybody's going to follow me, follow me on this painting tomorrow, I would say prep your canvas. Um, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in just a moment. Um, but it'll dry overnight, over day, over the daytime, and then it'll be ready to go tomorrow for you. Um, I like to do it beforehand just so it's dry enough that we're not running into any issues during the painting. But um, really cool techniques with this bat I'm going to be showing tomorrow. Sorry if there's a glare. I've been trying to work with not having a glare on this camera. But so it's a very fun painting to do. So that'll be tomorrow. So if you're doing this with me, um, you know, I have two canvases here. I have one and two. And um, we're going to prep the otter first. And then we're going to prep the bat. And let the otter dry a little bit. But what I do is I pour... I don't really like to pour a lot of paint on the canvas itself. Um, just because I end up putting too much. And it's a waste of a paint. And it's also taking longer to dry. So I actually put it right on the plate. And when I'm going to uh, base coat this... There you go, Pacino, you're gonna get down. Um, you must work from one end to the other end the entire way through. So I like the side to side. Um, it, it ends up melding the paint onto the canvas a lot, a lot nicer than up and down, but it's totally up to you and your preference. So I'm gonna be doing this side to side. My cat is up here today, so he's probably gonna be a little nuisance. But we'll go ahead and get started. So just side to side, covering the whole canvas. Um, if you wanna do your edges, you can. If you wanna do edges differently later, you can do that as well. But while I'm doing this, I also want to say a huge thank you to everybody who wished me well yesterday. Um, I felt bad for even, you know, putting up that I was not feeling well, but um, I wanted to make sure everybody knew why I wasn't doing a video after I had promised I was doing one. Uh, so thank you all for wishing me well. And there are some of you who I know have been dealing with, you know, health issues and things. So. Um, I wish you all well. I hope that you feel better. I feel better today. Um, so, you know, I, I, like I said, I felt bad to even post anything like that <laughs> when I know other people have worse things going on than just a migraine. Um, but migraines, they usually put me out for, for a day. So I heed the call and I rest. <laughs> but thank you all so much for your kind words and generosity. So just side to side, um, if you end up stopping at any point and kind of, you know, just blotching it in as opposed to going long from one end to the other, you just come back in with your brush and take it one end to the other. I am guilty of, of doing that and that's, you know, if that's part of your process, then 
that's fine. Um, the paint on the canvas with this brush feels really nice and smooth, so it makes it easy to, to stop and splotch. And, you know, that's a part of the relaxation of painting. So, you know, if you like that feeling, that's fine. Just come back later on and go a long ways end to end. Wet paint on the canvas feels nice. Dry paint on the canvas, not so much. And the reason for putting this base coat on is there's spots that I'm gonna leave untouched basically with the colored paint, uh, like blues and yellows and green and brown and everything. Um, but I don't want to just leave empty canvas that is completely unpainted. Um, I really don't like doing that. The whole canvas needs to be covered. And the white base keeps that happening. Even though you really can't, you can't tell, you can't really see it, but it is there. Um, I do feel like though that if you left it without this coat, you'd definitely be able to tell that there is no paint on it um, when you're up close in person and it's just kind of an artist etiquette maybe it's more than that and I just kind of I don't know I, I don't talk to a whole lot of very very accomplished um, art teachers who know better than I so I'm not really sure but um, it feels like you know it's more of an etiquette to me it's it's, it's good to cover everything when it comes to the canvas. Especially if you know you're going to leave any open spaces on it. If you can't tell if you put paint down somewhere or not, go back over it. That is totally fine. Um, but you should be able to tell. Um, I am able to tell that I covered everything here. You'll kind of see it's real dry any place you didn't hit and really wet any place you did. Alright, so I'm going to let that one dry for now. And we're going to hit um, the bat painting, get that ready for tomorrow. Same exact um, idea. It's just with a different color now, it's just with black. Um, some people like to draw the bat on beforehand. Um, that's fine too. If you would rather do it that way, draw the bat on and then cover around the bat tomorrow. Um, that'd be fine as well. The way that I set up the bat is, it's a very work from scratch kind of subject. Uh, and I was gonna show, well I am, I am going to show tomorrow how how that uh, is brought about. With the black background, I say it's a good kind of starter painting for um, something foundational and, um, I don't know, almost like a live, uh, sketch painting kind of deal where as you go you can tweak it to make it look the way it needs to look um, instead of having to fill in lines that are already down you're pretty much sculpting your painting until it becomes what the final product is going to be so I set the bat up in that way and with this black background it's really easy to fix any to, to sculpt on, I would say, to, to do that kind of sculpting with your paintbrush. It's real easy to, to kind of tweak, I'd rather say, instead of fix, because you're basically making purposeful mistakes that have meaning to them uh, while you are sculpting and constructing your, your bat. So it'll be a really neat technique that I'm excited to show. Really easy. Um, I know that coming from me, a lot of people say, well, yeah, easy for you, but um, I still have a lot of difficulty painting sometimes, so um, 
I, I thought that it, it's a good it's a good one for anybody who is interested in that kind of style and it's a good starter for that kind of style as well it's one of my favorites um, if anybody saw my tiger it was also done in the technique I'm gonna show tomorrow and um, I'm just super happy with the kind of outcome that I get from paintings like that so um, it, it feels there's such a unique feeling to it as opposed to um, anything else that I paint and I thought if I can give anybody else that feeling and see if they like that technique that would be awesome But with today, I feel like today, um, today's session is going to help also to loosen up. It's almost like this is like the warm up before tomorrow's painting. Um, it'll loosen up kind of your brush strokes and it'll loosen up your mind a little. It doesn't have to be so, um, I guess, complex and, and serious. It's, it's a good kind of warm up to to get the flow of what's going to be taking place tomorrow with the bat. Um, so today we're just going to think real freely. Just going to let the piece kind of fall together real nice and easy and let it be what it is. And then tomorrow uh, we'll definitely be ready for For the sculpting and, and the processing and everything that he's done for, for tomorrow's painting. I definitely recommend um, if you end up doing tomorrow's painting, make sure to do this one first. Um, this otter. Uh, you can change it to a different animal if you'd rather. A different um, water creature of any kind. It is your painting. This was actually suggested to me by a friend of mine who loves otters. And, uh, you know... I thought an otter would be a lot of fun. So, um, but you can, you know, whatever creature that you like, you can change it up. Real free. It does not have to be anything constricting or anything in a box. And on here, I would all, I would also do black edges with this painting. There is something, um, and I'm talking about the bat a lot, even though that's not today's video, but uh, there was something about the bat with a very dark background, and it was pretty much pitch black, that made it stick out so nicely. So, um, really wanted to go with that on top of I mean, everything just kind of fell together for for that being the good good one for tomorrow. Good, um, different technique. Something people can try out and see if they like it uh, in that method. And you don't have to do your edges today if you don't want to. If you're pepping your canvas, uh, but you are welcome to. I'm probably... We'll probably be ready for the otter once this is done. Hi Rita, how are you doing? And thank you Linda, thank you for sharing. try to make sure that that image is not washed out by the light when we're getting ready for the otter. So I apologize if it's hard to see right now.
If anybody um, knows anyone who doesn't have a Facebook but would like to see videos like this, uh, these are up on, these are all going up on the Party Art YouTube, YouTube channel. So they'll be viewable whether you have Facebook or not. And I'm going to try to get every single one of these up there. It'll be weird to hear that when they're up on YouTube, because they'll already be up there. <laughs> um, and also, if anybody has followed any of the other videos within all this time that's passed since the last one, um, I'd love to see your art. What you come up with if you've been doing anything that i haven't been showing but you've been painting i'd love to see that as well doesn't have to be what i show you it could be something that you got on your own or did on your own or did with a different teacher that'd be really cool to see You can message them to me, you could comment them in the statuses of these videos. You could tag Party Yard if you like. Any stubborn canvas, I just scrub brush it out. So the bat will be prepped for tomorrow. Super excited about that painting. Now let's put this off to the side and get this otter up here. And today's colors are going to be yellow, blue, brown, black, and white. So they're the only ones that I've used in this piece. Doesn't look like it's washed out anymore over there on the example. So that's really good. And I'm going to move it over a little bit so everyone can see the other. Let me get these paints poured out here. I finally got some plates, so we're not going to have to look at all of my super dirty plates any much longer. <laughs> Just the one I used last night on this otter. And I pretty much am always using the same paints. Um, I don't really switch anymore to the phthalos or anything like that unless the piece calls for that. But um, that's to show that can use just the primaries to get what you need um, if you don't have brown a good way to make brown is if you have red and green um, if you don't have green yellow and blue uh, so as you can see you know using the red and the yellow and the blue in a certain way will make other colors that you need so you know yellow and blue make the green mix the red with the green and you'll get your brown um, and then there's various shades based on how you mix that so play around with mixing the colors um, understand your color schemes red and yellow make the orange that's another way you could do it make orange and make green and then uh, blend those and see see what kind of 
colors you get as well it should be along the lines of brown maybe a little gray but let's get this canvas up here all right move this might have to adjust this camera just a little bit Hopefully that can, that'll be seeing the top. So, um, very first thing, um, this is one of those times where I like to kind of plan accordingly and, um, you know, paint certain areas before other areas so that they can dry in time for me to come back and work on certain other areas. So the very first area that I'm going to hit is actually the water down here. And what I did was I mixed, I started with a mixture of yellow and blue and white to make a nice aqua color. If you like teals and those kind of colors, you can stay in the teal section of, you know, your, your paint colors. That's more of the blue and the yellow together and then maybe a little bit of white. And you're going to stay pretty much in the yellow uh, with that mixture. Whereas um, if you like more of the blues and... Um, kind of the areas that they go, I would stick more with the blues, but, um, I'm going to probably stick with more teals with this painting. It, it actually comes out more along the lines of cool instead of warm. And, um, it, it gives a nice feeling for kind of what's going on with, with the picture. So what I'm going to start with is that blue and that yellow. And throw it over on this other plate here. Blue and yellow to make a nice teal. Right now that's green. <clears throat> but adding more blue brings it to teal. I may need to add blue a couple of times. But I like to add a little bit at a time. As opposed to a lot of it at a time. Um, just to make sure I'm not overdoing anything. I got a teal. I'm going to add a lot of white to this. Bringing it lighter and lighter. One thing I don't like to do is continue to mix in this spot right here. So I'll take a little bit over off to the side, put it right there, and add more white to that to bring it up higher. Otherwise you're going to get stuck over here just with the same color every time that you try to mix. So went lighter over on this side. Let's start with that color. And I'm okay with some of these other colors being on, on the plate. So this time, instead of going straight across, I like a lot of motion to my water. Anybody who's seen any of my other videos knows that motion in the water is, is, is my thing. So I like to bring this to a curve and we're actually going to bring it not halfway, probably about 25% of the way, quarter of the way down here. Maybe a little bit over a quarter. Definitely above half though. And that's where it's gonna start. And I'm swooping it in from the top like it's pouring. Same thing's gonna happen over here, like it's pouring. They're both pouring and they're making this, this nice motion happen with the water. It does not need to be a hundred percent you know covered here. It's just real flowy, real flick of the wrist. Real free. I really don't mind whatever happens. It's just free, very free. Good exercise for the for the hand and brush strokes. So that's the start of the top of the water there. Um, what you can do now is you can add uh, different colors accordingly. If you want to add just teals, you can add some dark teal in here. Just kind of the exact same way, just flow it in, but make sure it doesn't, you're not going to overly blend. You're just going to throw it, flick it on there, 
I'm actually I have my my brush this way, not this way, sideways, like my my hand here, and you're just gonna use that edge to bring these strokes in real real simply. You can add white. I don't rinse my brush, I just add these colors as, as we go. Again, don't over blend, just kind of flick it on there. Let it, let it do what it's gonna do. You can add yellow if you like. A little bit of yellow here and there. Especially back here. Uh, if you're gonna do the sun in the sky, like it's on the original over there. Um, you can do a little bit of yellow back in the back here. Don't need a whole lot, just, just a little bit. Um, if you like the blues, you can add some dark blues. Think about underneath some of these ways that are happening is where I would stick the blues. So underneath anything that's feels like it's on top is where you're gonna kind of stick these blues and same same way just flicking the wrist with that edge it's this way it's not this way if you can see that it's not this way it's this way very important it's very 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 important to use that side of the brush pretty much the only thing you really need to worry about other than don't over blend and this will come together for you if you just flick it on here no rhyme or reason this is something I I mean I might be wrong in my terminology but to me it's very interpretive this this, this piece here what I see you might see a little differently I do like to leave some spaces you know there's there's a lot of canvas that it seems like it's showing through but it's actually just the white paint on the canvas that's back there so that's why we put the base um, you know this style of painting here is is a little different than what I'm usually showing where you know I say cover the canvas cover the canvas since we put the base down we don't really have to worry about covering every stitch of this canvas um, the sky is not fully covered, but, you know, behind it is white, so it works. So we're going to let this area calm down for a little bit and dry up. And we're actually going to come down here, and we're going to hit this with a completely different color. It's going to be darker. Um, and the way I like to work it is dark from the bottom. Coming up here to the top is going to be a little lighter. So we're going to mix... Mix that teal or that dark blue, whatever it is you're using. We're gonna make it dark. Even if it's just a dark green, we're just gonna make sure that is the darkest area. If you wanna add a pinch of brown to make it even darker, that's fine. I'm gonna start from the bottom and I'm actually gonna keep this circular, so. You know, the bottom edge of this canvas is going to stay white. Down here, you can make whatever kind of shapes on the bottom you like. I like this kind of round shape since everything is very rounded in this piece. I like to keep with that shape. We're going to bring that, just continuing bring it up we're just gonna everything down here should be filled other than the certain corners you're gonna leave open I'm gonna bring it lighter as I come up lighter and lighter even if you just add white to your brush lighter and lighter as it comes to the top since the sun is shining through it's gonna be a little lighter up here again does not need to be fully blended um, it just needs to be, for the most part, covered down here. 
other than those spots that you want to leave open. Try to flatten out your paint. Continue to just push that in here till it's flat. It's okay to get some different colors in there. Um, that's what I mean by overblend. We don't want to just have one mashed color down here. We want a bunch of different colors. However, we don't want any globs of paint just sticking up and taking forever to dry. Unless you like the texture. I mean, if you like the texture, of that kind of thing and feel free to you know stick with that but I personally don't want any texture in this one for mine I'm gonna hit a couple of spots up here with the dark that I used on the bottom that dark teal just to show a little bit of separation And that can be used in a few different spots. So you can, you can throw this up here too. So hopefully everything has been very good up to this point. If you're following me, um, take your time. Don't rush. Have fun with this. I'm gonna add some more in here a little bit. If anyone has any questions while doing this, please let me know. So let's, we'll let that dry for a little bit and we're going to come up here to the top and I'm going to move this back a little if possible. Yeah, that way we can see the top there and um, show this next step with the sky. Um, it's pretty, um, I don't really know the word I'm looking for, but um, it's not complex whatsoever. It's just very... Uh, splotchy with with a little bit of blue and a lot of white Lots and lots of white so really just adding a little little tip of the brush is gonna have some blue on it and you're gonna carry it into a, a Large portion of white. We don't want that much color on here yet And um, I'm honestly gonna kind of splash that off on the plate and all that I do is this time I take this motion with the brush instead of it being this way anymore. I'm actually going to take it this way. And it's really just a side to side real dry brush in here. I want to see some of that um, white canvas showing even though it is painted. Just want a little bit of it. And I'm, I'm planning on keeping this area open so I can just add that sunlight in there and it doesn't have to um, it doesn't have to be covered by anything I apologize if that's the light is kind of taking over that my shadow I'll try to keep my shadow there but and again we're not taking it all the way off the canvas you can take it as far as you like to take it but leave a lot of it open it, it's just kind of the idea that maybe there's some sky up here leaving different levels of different layers of it you can add some more white to to the brush if need be just side to side real dry if you want to add a little bit more blue you are welcome to but I would not add much 
I would honestly cover again with white before I go in with, with any more blue. Something really light. I'll bring that closer so everyone can see what I just added, but it's the same motion, just side to side, not covering the whole canvas, not really caring what's happening, just letting it do what it's doing. So let me bring that closer. See if I can give a good picture here for everybody. All right, let's see. Yep, so that's exactly what it looks like. Um, just here and there, splattering the blue. We don't need to over define the sky. It's just there. And what we'll do now is we'll take the yellow, clean, clean and dry the brush. We want a clean yellow. Get your water and your washcloth handy and clean that brush out real good. I'm gonna go straight in the yellow, make sure nothing is hindering the yellow, no blue, no green, nothing else is in there. And it's pretty much the same stroke, except we're gonna stay in that that area that we left open. So just kinda throw in some light around up here. Not overdoing it, just throwing up there and leave it. Let me bring that close. It was the same technique. The brush was angled like this. It was just side to side. It almost feels like kindergarten. <laughs> but this is uh, the style of this painting. It's very free, very just loosening up whatever muscles in the hand that we'll need for more painting adventures. I'm hoping that everybody can see that pretty well. And that's pretty much it for this guy. I'm not really going to do much else up there. Um, it's very open. It's very, I mean, it's still covered with all the white paint. So it is covered, but it doesn't necessarily look like it. So down here again, let me pull this close once again. We're only going to stay down in this sector, uh, <laughs> the sector, I'm trying to say sector and section at the same time, but the sector of, of the painting or section of the painting, we're going to stay in here. Um, and I've got my super fine liner brush. This is a very good brush. If you don't have one, I would definitely get one. Um, but if also if you don't have this and you are painting along just a nice brush that you can do liners with um, or lines with They have a nice tip at the end of the brush and that's all that we're working on is the very tip So you lightly touch the canvas and you just kind of wisp lines and that's all gonna happen around this area to start with This is where the top of the water and the underneath, you know the depth of the water under underneath the water is having a separation so it's almost like we're looking in a tank and we can see the top of the water and we can also see underwater and I'm just gonna wisp a bunch of lines in a lot of different directions I really don't care where if you saw my beta fish video this is that same thing that same technique I'm just wisping a lot of different white lines I'm using white paint the only one that I really focus on being completely a concrete line is the very bottom one that separates the bottom of the sea from the top But all these others, they can wisp around in all their different ways and not really have any rhyme or reason, just wisping. It's a good, uh, good practice with, with a little liner brush. Even in the back, you can hit some of these in the back. Um, if you want, you can take and use other colors as well. So 
So if you want to take some blue, some with some blue in here, or the teal, if you want to stick with the teal, you can do that as well. I like a lot of variety of color in my paintings when when the opportunity arises. So I'm usually trying to to do just that. And use a lot of different colors, especially if they're along the same scheme. I use the same blue to mix with the yellow and the brown. So it works for this painting pretty well. Yeah, just wisping lines the same way the whole time. Let me bring that closer. This glare is just really working to hide everything that's going on. All right. So those are the lines. Um, I'll probably save all of this splashy this going on that's from the example I'll probably save all of that for the very end um, last night I when I was doing this I um I kind of splashed it during um, during the in between of the otter and, and the water and everything so today I'll save it for the end to keep it simple it doesn't have to be over complicated um, but there are now options to take with the otter. We can either let this dry and put the otter in and then tweak the otter when it dries with some of the watercolor that have, has been used. So this teal and the light and all that. Or while this is drying, we can throw um, the otter in, which with this style of painting, while it's wet, is the best time if you like how it is on the example but if you want more detail on your otter uh, you can definitely let it dry come back and do the steps that I'm gonna show and um, you know get get a picture of an otter up if you want to get really detailed with them and just follow it along you know make it a challenge um, you can never ever ever go wrong no matter how much you don't think it looks like it you can never go wrong with challenging yourself to um, to get those details of whatever subject you're doing um, what you're honestly doing when you're doing that is you're pretty much you know you're taking the time to analyze and um, see all the details that are there that you wouldn't notice on a regular basis and you're kind of training your mind um, to catch those things catch those details and kind of further your horizons with painting for sure and also I mean in life with analyzing things I would say um, I, I've noticed a difference when I'm taking a look at anything anymore I'm looking for a lot of details and things that I usually wouldn't find at just a first glance um, a lot of these uh, animals that are out there that people want to paint or or do any type of art with um, they have a lot of really intricate details and beautiful designs to them that it's just it's beautiful and it's very natural and it, uh, easy to miss if you don't really pay attention so uh, that's something that I would always encourage is you know if you want to take your image further um, pull up a picture of whatever it is and take the take a good gander at it and see all the details that could be added see all the things that usually we're missing not looking at not analyzing these these things so the other thing we're going to think about is um if you want to go with the darker otter or if you want to go with kind of the lighter brown that i have here um, mine started with the lighter brown and with blue and a mixture of brown more brown than blue brings it down to a darker brown you can also add black to your brown just a little bit to make it darker it's totally up to you how you want to do that um, 
but your brown is going to be very telling. The brown that you go with is going to be telling of your piece. Um, lighter brown. Either either of the browns are going to help it stick out. The lighter brown is really going to make it stick out like a sore thumb. The darker brown is going to kind of push it underwater more so, I feel. Um, so, I'm going to mix my brown with blue and a little bit of black just to get a darker brown. I'm gonna start with the head of the otter. Pretty much where I want it to be. It'll be right here. And again, my camera is gonna show this backwards. The original is facing the opposite way of what the camera's showing. So whatever direction you want to do this is up to you. apologize that I'm not able to do better than that um, I would have to turn the camera and, and then I wouldn't be able to see if my camera goes out so switch it up if you need to switch it up and just take the same steps just the other direction so starting with the head just doing kind of this circular motion almost like a, a comma that's upside down Got a little bit more light there, so a little less of the light makes it easier to see. I'm gonna follow this. This is the neck, and it's gonna come just right down to there. We can thicken some of these lines out a little bit if you like. But from kind of the tip here, I'm going to start to wide this out. So it looks like a fish with an interesting tail. And that's going to, all of these um, motions are going to end up being really circular. So I'm really going to circle that around, really rounded. Now it's going to rain really hard. <laughs> I'm going to continue this circle. So now, it almost looks like a ladle or something similar. This is just kind of the shoulder and, and the body coming together here. I'm gonna continue this backwards and it's gonna round off again till we have a tail that's peeking out of the water. As this is happening, the brown is grabbing some of these teals to tone it back to um, kind of mesh with the water. If this was standing out a whole lot um, on its own, it would look like the otter is outside of the water, like right in front of it. We want the otter in the water, so it's really important to um, whether this is at the end when the otter is dry or during when all this paint around here is still wet it's really important to make sure it blends with its environment so it's as simple as using the same colors that are in the environment to make that happen when it's dry you use a dry brush just really 
move it in. But while it's wet, we can actually take advantage of the paint around and uh, make it happen, which I'll show in a minute. We're gonna finish the body here real fast. From this part of the tail comes up one of the feet. The other foot's going to be back here too, and we're going to fill this in. I hope everybody can see that it got real dark over here. But as it fizzles out, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it not being fully clear. If you want, you can come back in here and reinstate this neck. So this is there. And this otter is going to look and feel really weird as you're painting it, but it's going to come together by the end. But these lines are important. You know, if you make this line, that line's going to stay there. Unless you touch it again. But I want that line to stay there so I can see where the neck is. You can make this a little wider if you like. And real rounded. Most of the shapes in this painting are very round, so round is good. I'm going to take a little bit of black now on the brush. And highlight the feet. One's going to be down here, just kind of off to the side. If you need to come back in the brown to make that work, definitely can. And just keep working that in. Keep pushing these paints around. And right now, while I have kind of a, a brown on, on the brush, I'm just going to dry it off on the towel. I'm not going to rinse it. I'm just going to dry it on the towel. And I'm going to come over to this side and just kind of scrape the brown into the green. This is going to show the motion that's happening when... The otter is splashing in the water. It's very free, very forgiving, just kind of, I have a small brush too, it's very small. Um, it's kind of pushing it around into the green. If you want to come in with some green, some of that teal, I like the teal. You can throw some teal in here too. Just show that, that movement. Again, this otter is going to feel weird until until it's done. So if it looks weird, that's great. It's exactly where you want them. I'm not worried about these lines right now. Those lines that we threw in earlier. Um, we're going to come back and throw them back in. But for now, I'm just worried about getting this otter into his environment. So it's a good point. I'm going to mix... The lighter fur of this otter with some brown and some yellow and some white. And you really just want a nice, almost a, uh, how, how would you say, like a kind of coffee color. <laughs> if you put a lot of creamer in the coffee, it's a coffee creamer, coffee with the creamer in it. And the nose is going to come out a little bit gonna feel kind of goofy but that's all right and then it's gonna follow around and fill this whole space that's missing a little bit into the chest as well <laughs> um, what I like to do from there is just kind of symbolize the nose and the mouth so the nose is about here the mouth 
It's almost like a little cat mouth. You just put that line and a little lips. And the eye is actually going to be right here. So it's kind of right above that, that cheek, that cheekbone. And with some darker version of brown, I just add more black to this brown. That's going to be the ears. They're going to come up here. Just fill that spot. Fill that spot a little bit. A little bit more. Come back in with my brown to make sure that that edge is not being covered when it's not supposed to be. We're gonna need to carry part of this brown a little bit further down here. And there's actually a little bit of black right above that snout along that line. We're getting closer and closer and closer to our otter. So this is a point you can start to make any adjustments you need. Maybe um, I want a little bit more of the body over on the side so that it looks a little more even. You can do that. You can um, mess around with lighting and darkness if you like. You know, obviously, closer to the sun, lighter. Closer to the dark, darker. So up here, I'm going to add a little bit of this. You can either do a little bit of white or a lighter version of the teal, a lighter version of the brown. Um, a lighter version of all three would not even be bad. Because whereas there's a lot going on here. It's underwater. But the light's hitting it. Um, but at the same time, this style of painting does not require super detail unless you want it to. So I don't want to super overboard do it. I just want to kind of hint at at the lighter versions up here, the darker versions down underneath. So I might slightly make them darker, but I'm not focused on making it super dark. Another aspect actually too is when things are out of, outside of the water, maybe even lighter. So I'm okay to take this light brown on the part of the tail that's outside of the water. Just keep it light. But when it's in the water, that's where I really want to take this dark brown as well. So it's a lot darker. You can even do some more of that teal color under here. <laughs> to show the difference that's that's occurring. to um, the beard area underwater here You can continue this to your liking. If you want to add more detail to the otter, if you want to add more darks and lights and everything, feel free.
gonna try to not spend too much time on this guy myself so we can get to the next step here but because of the motion um, you know things kind of get a little blurry especially underwater uh, you know I, I can't imagine plopping underwater and all of a sudden you can just see everything clearly it's gonna be a lot of you know bubbles and um, the the foam that happens and, and a lot of movement and a lot of you know you, you just you're not gonna see every detail perfectly so you really want to think messy when you're painting something falling in water um, or anything to that extent what we can do from here is we can do maybe a couple bubbles I can show you the real simple technique I apologize that I did not show these bubbles with the seahorse video. I meant to do that and I completely forgot. Uh, I'm so anxious when I'm doing this this type of thing here. So my mind is just flying through 50 different places at one time. So I will show the bubbles in this video. They're so simple, very, very easy. Um, I'm not just saying that. <laughs> what I like to start with is white on a small brush and I'm gonna actually just make a circle. I'm gonna fill that in. It's not gonna be crystal clear white, and that's okay. Whatever color is in your water, maybe on the bottom, um, maybe up here in the top, whatever that you choose, I'm gonna choose the dark teal so it's easier to see. And also, I think it's, um, it's a better choice. <laughs> and you just hit the center of your bubble, but you make sure to leave those white lines around the edge. So all I'm doing is I'm hitting the bubble area on the inside in the middle. I'm gonna dry that off, off of the brush. You can even leave it like that, that's not bad. But I'll show what you do is you come inside here and you continue push to push that until you have a real thin white line around. <laughs> and it's up to you if you wanna leave some spots of it lighter green and the darker green that I'm about to put in. That's a bubble right there. Um, and you just continue to do that, all different sizes. You know, you can do, you can even just leave some white. You can leave some of this teal shade. You can throw some teal shades in there if you like. It's honestly just dotting the canvas with a couple colors. Um, there are a lot of ways to do bubbles. This is not the only way. There are times where you can take a lot of time on a bubble. Um, but this is just a real simple painting, so it doesn't need to be anything too crazy. Just so we know there's some bubbles floating around. And I will put them, you know, here and there and everywhere. many as you like. There's a lot of movement happening, so I think there's a lot of bubbles happening. I'm gonna take a trip back down to my liner brush now. And I'm gonna add these white lines back. You know, consistency is, is key. They're gonna cover the feet here. They're gonna cover that tail. This is that bottom line I was talking about earlier. That bottom line needs to always be pretty much there. It can take different curves and directions as well. You can throw it up this way and curve it around as much as you like, but it's gotta be there. Curving these lines also shows the movement happening. This is really, it's really nifty. A lot of this stuff, it feels, it feels odd. And you, you take a double take at it because you're so close to these pieces. Um, you take a double look and you wonder, you know, is this right or is this wrong or is this weird? Um, but generally, that's a good indication that you're on the right path. You can 
even put um, some little tiny bubbles here if you, if you really want. I do want to take out some of these lines in between so that it's not confusing. Right in there. This is the very bottom line, so it needs to be pretty much that, that solid line. Um, you can also do a little bit of black if you like, kind of underneath of it. Or blue, or dark teal, something dark just needs to be underneath here sometimes in some places. So if you got your lines and you've got your motion and your direction and everything happening that you like, and you've got this to your liking, I'm going to show you how to add all of the noise and, and splashing of the water that occurs when the otter is playing in the water. It's really easy. It takes a fan brush. Anybody who knows me or has um, done splatter techniques with me knows how messy this can get so uh, this is very messy technique but I'm gonna show it in a couple ways because we do it in a couple ways for this painting there's my cat <laughs> um, but we're gonna take a good glop of white paint on this fan brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it up like this and splotch it everywhere I'm gonna try to remain above water as opposed to down here. I really wanna keep it up up top. If it hits down in the bottom, we can always adjust that. That's no problem. A lot of these splotches. Second way, add some weight to your brush. Add some water to it just a little bit. Dab it off here. And it's not gonna be quite as much of the lines if you tap it a little light, lightly. I like a lot of stuff up here. And then third, to kind of top all of that off. Anytime you have a crashing wave, it's good to have those spl uh, splatters. But to top it off, you want to really dab some crazy foam happening all around. Try not to be symmetrical with this. It's just it's going everywhere. Hitting everything. It's every which direction. If you want to come back in with these Super splotchy. Things, you can do that too. Like I said, I didn't want to hit down here, but if you do, that's okay. Because all you do is you take another brush. And you push it in. And this painting is super forgiving with this. It's already under the water, so some of them are okay, but I don't want it to look like it's outside of the water at all. You could probably even get away with adding some of these splotches under here. Because it does get foamy underwater too. I'm just gonna go right into the otter to make it a little fuzzy. Maybe a little bit of the otter color for reflecting out here. And that is the gist of painting this otter into the water. 
Um, I think with mine, I will probably add more of the teals into him when he dries. That way he's matching his environment even more like over here in these examples. Um, but I'll let that dry instead of continuing to work it. Um, and then I'm gonna post my final result um, as a status. If anybody has any questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you for watching this. Um, don't forget to sign the bottom right hand corner of your piece, whatever color you like, just your first and last initial or whatever kind of signature um, sign that you, you do. Everybody does it differently. Um, and again, if you missed the beginning of this video and you want to paint with me with the bat, I prepared this canvas and I prepared the bat canvas at the same time. I put a base coat of white on this one. I put a base coat of black on the bat. Follow that and get it ready for tomorrow if you're going to follow me doing the painting wise so you'll be ready um, and we can get right to it because there's a lot of instruction I'm going to show with the bat. It's, it's kind of a foundational um, sculpting kind of paint style I think. I think uh, if, if you're interested, you'll enjoy it, so I'm excited to show that. But make sure to watch the beginning of this video if you want to see how to coat your canvas. And I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much.